Pacifist Radio is on the air. You have tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. You don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one piece. It comes out in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. So here's the question of the day. Do, does Jesus need celebrities to help him spread the gospel? Or, I guess, when it comes to the pro-life movement, which is the area in which I operate, do pro-life advocates need former abortionists or quote-unquote rock star speakers and personalities to advance the pro-life message. That's what we want to talk about today on the Mark Harrington Show with your radio activist, Mark Harrington. You can go to markharrington.org to find out about our radio program. We come to you uh, over our, our social media platforms on Thursdays, and we also come to you over three Salem radio stations in Detroit, Cleveland, and Columbus on Saturdays. So you can find out more by going to markharrington.org if you want to check out the radio broadcast. So what I want to talk about today uh, is, does Jesus need celebrities to advance the kingdom of God? Does he? Well, the reason I bring this up, and you might wonder uh, or figure it out by now, uh, of course, I guess all of us have seen the news of singer and producer Kanye West, who came to faith in Christ recently and has produced a, a, uh, a CD uh, that talks about Jesus being king. Jesus is king is the title of the, uh, the, the uh, album. And so he came to Jesus, made big news, right, all over the place, people talking about it, uh, non-Christian and Christian alike. And like everyone else, of course, anytime someone comes to faith in Christ, anybody, when anybody repents and comes to Jesus, I'm like everybody else. I'm thrilled, right, that this would happen. And I'm happy for him, happy for his family. And hopefully uh, uh, happy for what this might mean to the Christian witness uh, in America. I join in, with millions of Christians in uh, praying for him and hoping for the best and hoping that he could use his, uh, his platform, which is huge, to advance the kingdom of God. So let me be on record up front. <laughs> And, uh, and and let you know that you know I among everyone else uh, is in total support of Kanye West's conversion to Christianity, and, and it's a big deal when you have someone that was living the way he was uh, and come to Christ. I mean, it's big news, right? And uh, his stance now on issues like pornography, uh, abortion, other things. You know, and, and the fact that, you know, I got, about a year ago, he came out in support of Donald Trump. Maybe that was before the election. I'm not sure. And that made big news, of course. So obviously he's been on this path uh, to come to Christ. Uh, you know, Kanye West, if you don't know, and frankly, I don't really follow him, but uh, he's a rapper, a very well-known rapper. He's a producer, a music producer. He's won 21 Grammys. That's a lot. He's also a fashion designer, and he's known to be married. Obviously, he's married to Kim Kardashian, uh, but he's been known to be controversial, and therefore, I think this is why this made such big news. And most of the Christian community, as they should, are obviously, you know, were, were thrilled that this happened and, and want a spokesperson like Kanye West speaking up for Christ and Christianity. Nobody would say that's a bad thing. But I think we need to maybe pump the brakes a little bit. Uh, when it comes to celebrity, 
and Christianity. I think we need to maybe just slow down a little bit uh, and and step back and kind of look at this from a biblical point of view. And that's what I'd like to do today on the Mark Harrington show here. Uh, I don't want to be Johnny Rain Cloud. You know, people accuse me. Say, oh, Mark, you're always so cynical. You're always so negative. You're always pointing out the bad. Well, maybe that's the case in a lot of situations. Uh, I tend to hope to think that I'm balanced, you know, that I, I don't just rush to judgment one way or the other, that I try to sit back and discern things. Uh, I look at scripture, look at culture, my history, my experience, and come to a conclusion. Uh, so I don't want to be, you know, perceived as being totally negative on this. I'm not. I'm for it. But I've been around long enough to see that celebrities that come to Christ and claim Jesus often, more often than not, uh, fall away. or they all, they let us down in some way or another. I can tell you this, Kanye West is going to let us down one way or the other. I mean, they, they're going to say something along the way that may not square with Christianity or who knows. But, you know, when we put our trust in human individuals, they're always going to let us down to one level or another just because we're fallen. So we, we know along the way, we're not going to hold that against him necessarily, but we understand that... Uh, when we put our trust in, in individuals like uh, as celebrities like this, we know we're more than likely going to be let down at some level or another. But I do look forward to seeing what he might be able to do and, and say, you know, bringing people to Christ. Already people are talking about Jesus, which normally would not have done it in the past. But time will tell. And so what I want to do, I'm going to take a little bit of time here and talk about the need to proceed with caution when we look at this type of a, a conversion when it comes to celebrities or people that are in the news on Hollywood, music, sports, or whatever. And look at what the Bible says about it, uh, what, it what the Bible says about Christian leadership. And so what I want to do, I want to tur turn uh, uh, first to uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, and read a story or a parable that Jesus told when it came to conversion and uh, the different soils. This is the parable of the soils. At least that's what it's been called. And so we start out in Matthew, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea and large crowds gathered to him. So he got into the boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the beach. Now, it's interesting that, you know, I'm reading this verse. And the first thing that comes, comes to mind is Jesus was a celebrity. At least at this point in his ministry, is very popular. Huge crowds are gathering, it says. A whole crowd was standing on the beach. Uh, the difference between, say, Jesus and how he used his popularity or celebrity and the way that we often do, Christian leaders and others use it, is that Jesus ain't going to let us down. And Jesus used his celebrity not for his own purposes, to become famous and rich and liked. He used his celebrity for the mission that he was, uh, he was given, which was to go to the cross. And remember, he, he wasn't a celebrity when all that happened. They all left him. <laughs> so he lost his celebrity status. He became very unpopular. So he didn't go to Jesus's head like it often does with other celebrities. So anyway, he goes on to give this story. And he says, and he spoke, to many, he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. And others fell on the rocky places, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. 
Others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on good soil and yielded crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And then he says, he who has ears, let him hear. So Jesus tells this story about the seeds, the sower and the seeds, right? The soils here and how seed falls on different types of soil and how that uh, you know, what happens after that. And then he goes on to explain this parable, starting in verse 18, where he says, Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Joy, Yet he has no firm root in himself. But it's only temporary. When affliction and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And, one, and the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns this is the man who hears the word and wor the worry of the world and the, and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And the one who, on whom uh, seed was sown into the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. All right, so here's the parable of the soils. And Jesus is talking about the word, which is the seed, and how it will either, uh, you know, and the different soils that it might fall upon, meaning our hearts. He's talking about the seed being the word of God, uh, the soil being our hearts. And he talks about three different types of, of soil, right? Three different types of soil. The first is the, uh, uh, and seed. The first, is the seed falls beside the road and the birds snatch it up. The second is the seed falls on rocky places where there is no root. And then the third type of seed falls on the thorns where worries and wealth uh, snatch it up. And he, he basically is talking about what happens during possible conversion. He's saying the seed that falls beside the road uh, gets snatched up because it doesn't find any root. The rocky places, it doesn't find root. And this makes sense, right? Um, if, you know, seed isn't going to find a, a good soil in a rocky place. It's not going to find good soil in thorny places. As, uh, and so he's talking about these three types of soil and how the seed doesn't take root. And then he talks about the good soil. And the good soil is, um, let's see here, once again, he says in, um, in verse 23, and the one whom the seed has been sown in the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. So he talks about it falling on good soil, the person who understands it, and bears fruit. And I think that's the important thing. When we see someone come to Christ, when we see someone change their heart, change their mind on the gospel, comes to Jesus, or even for that matter, even on the issue of abortion, for example, um, what we want to see is fruit. We want to see some time pass. We want to see whether it actually takes root in the soil of their heart. And, you know, I don't know, for an example, with Kanye West, whether this is going to take, uh, whether this seed, the word of God and his conversion is going to take into good soil or not. Only time will tell. But Jesus warns that, you know, it may look like they've come to Jesus, but, you know, some of these other things, they might be, it might be choked away. It might fall by the side of the road. Thorns might crowd it out, you know, all those things. Um, 
But if it falls on good soil, then there will be a harvest, there will be fruit. And so it is with us when we think about uh, people coming to Christ. Now, beyond that, when we talk about just leadership generally, Christian leadership, uh, there are some uh, guidelines in Scripture. Now, I'm not saying that Kanye West is a Christian leader. He doesn't lead a, uh, a church. Uh, he doesn't lead a ministry per se. But he is a Christian, and he has a huge platform, probably bigger than most anyone I could think of. Uh, a bigger platform probably than any pastor in America or any leader of a Christian organization. So in that sense, I mean, he really is or will be considered a Christian leader. And so for, therefore, we have to hold him to the same standards that we would any other Christian leader. And what we don't want to fall into here is we don't want to become so desperate for Christian leadership, which, by the way, I think we, all, we are in America in a lot of ways. Uh, that that the evangelical Christianity is so devoid of strong, courageous leadership that we immediately throw our weight behind a new convert like Kanye West. We just don't know uh, how this is all going to turn out. We don't want to relinquish Christian leadership to those in Hollywood or those who who are musicians or, for that matter, sports figures, athletes. We often do that. And I think because we're enamored, we're enamored by celebrity because of their platform, we are quick to, to put on them the mantle of leadership and often use them as a proxy, if you will, or a replacement for what I think God has established. And that is Christian leadership from the church out, from the church out, from from the pastors and those who claim Christ out into the culture. So, I mean, we just have to be a little bit careful about this and not elevate people like Kanye West to this Christian celebrity status without, uh, I think, years of, uh, of experience or track record. So, again, I'm, I'm just pumping the brakes a little bit and saying, listen, we don't want to rush to judgment so quickly, uh, lay on people. Uh, that mantle of Christian leadership without it being proved. And, you know, the Bible's very clear about this. Uh, we read in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 through 6, uh, Timothy, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Paul lays out uh, the, the, the standards, if you will, the qualifications for Christian leadership. And he says this, An overseer then must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine uh, or pugnacious, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. He must be one who manages his own ho household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity. But if a man does, does, does not know how to manage his household, how will he take care of the church of God? And then it says, and not a new convert so that he will not become conceited and fall into co the condemnation incurred by the devil and not a new convert. We do not want to elevate anybody, whether they are a celebrity from Hollywood or produce great music or a really good athlete to a leadership position. Now, I'm not saying they have to be a pastor, but we now put on them this mantle, if you will, or we lay hands on it and say, these are, you know, we, we, we ascribe to them being a leader to a new convert. The Bible is just, just clear about that. And the reason is, is that they just haven't had time to really uh, work it out, right? Working out their salvation. And they need time to do that. Uh, and we need to know if, you know, they're going to uh, stay with us uh, for a lifetime. So, we're, we're so eager to find leaders within the, uh, you know, Hollywood and the elites and other things that sometimes we quickly ascribe these, these you know, hero status to them. We'll call them rock stars often. Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, Jesus wasn't, he didn't use his celebrity 
for himself. I, I already said that. And, um, and neither should these people. I would love, I mean, Kanye West has a gigantic platform. Who wouldn't want that platform to advance the kingdom? But that's the thing. Time will tell whether he uses that platform to advance the kingdom or not. Used rightly, a platform like that can advance the kingdom. No question about it. I don't think Jesus necessarily needs it. He doesn't need any one of us. But he does use Christians. He uses the church to disciple the nations. And if we really want to learn about heroes, we need only look at the Bible. They're, it's replete with heroes. Those are the type of heroes we should be looking towards. Uh, also, we should be considering uh, people who for decades, people that I know or historically spent their lives consistently living a life of character in quiet service to the Lord. And we know people like that. Uh, I think of Billy Graham, for an example. I think of heroes, for me anyway, of like Francis Schaeffer in the 1980s that elevated the abortion issue to where it belonged in the evangelical church. Francis Schaeffer, who, who uh, uh, established Labrie uh, in Europe, where he brought young people in and trained them on the application of God's word to contemporary culture. Guys like him, um, guys like Joe Scheidler, for an example. Joe Scheidler's been in the pro-life movement for probably 50 years. Uh, this guy has the scars to prove it. This guy has been around and working in the pro-life movement for close to 50 years or more, and never once a scandal, never once. Those are the type of people that we ought to be putting on a platform, not in a sense that we make them idols, but they have proven themselves to be consistent uh, in character and constant and consistent in the proclamation of, of truth. I mean, we think of guys like uh, Martin Luther or John Calvin or, or uh, you know, Charles Spurgeon, people like that. Those are the type of people, if we're going to put people on a pedestal, let's do that. Although we don't want to treat them as heroes, we certainly can treat them as mentors. Uh, I also think of a good friend of mine, Tom Short. You know, Tom's going to be embarrassed that I probably brought this up. But Tom Short, here's a preacher that goes around to college campuses. Almost every day of the week, he's on a college campus preaching the word of God, consistently doing that. These are the type of people we ought to be holding up as heroes. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do that with Kanye West eventually if he stays consistent to uh, his proclamation or his, his, his faith. But we don't want to be looking to Hollywood necessarily for our Christian leadership. We have fallen, I've fallen prey to this in my own life as I have um, readily been willing to elevate certain people uh, and put them uh, in front of the camera or microphone or give them speaking opportunities or influence. I've made the mistake in my own life of doing that too quickly, uh, following after somebody or, or what have you. And I've seen people who became celebrities within the pro-life movement. I've seen their lives be destroyed because they let it get to their head and they lost the reason why they do what they do. I've seen it over and over again. Human nature is such that we make it about us. When we become famous, when we become a somebody that pe people consider as a hero or rock star, we often make it about us and we lose sight of why we started to do it in the first place. So when we're thinking of heroes, let's think of Joe Scheidler or Francis Schaefer or Tom Short, people like that, Billy Graham. We don't need Hollywood. We don't need celebrities to advance the kingdom of God. Although if they do and they're consistent in their walk and stay faithful to the calling, then all the better. But let's just be a little bit cautious uh, and, and, and look at what God's word says about this, that we should not elevate a new convert 
to a position of leadership. So that's kind of my take. I'm hopefully this just gives a little bit of balance. I am completely thrilled that Conway West and other people who are celebrities come to Christ and can use that platform for the kingdom. But I think we just got to be cautious before we rush to judgment behind them and support them in, in, without reservation, uh, whether it's in the Christian community or whether it be in the pro-life movement. Well, listen, uh, thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to The Mark Harrington Show. Go to markharrington.org if you want to find out more. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.